Yo, what's up, YouTube? My name is Chisha Zed. I'm back in here again with a new video for you guys. Let's get into it. So today I wanted to address a certain interaction that Kevin Samuels had with one of his callers who had a problem with black men asking her if she could smile. So I'm gonna play a small section of this just to give you guys an idea of how the conversation was going with this woman that he brought on the channel and then I'm gonna talk about it. I'm only gonna play a small section because Kevin is kind of touchy with the copyright stuff. Hey, Kevin, it's fair use. I just wanna talk about it. I'm not gonna play the full thing, just small section, check it out. See, this is why y'all want this why group protection. No, 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 up. listen very well, listen very well. This is when y'all talk about you want this group protection. You want a black man to step in. You okay, sis, and this all that kind of stuff? A black man can't even ask you to smile at him for risk of offending you. So, conversely, if there's something happening to you, you need to call your man. And the men you deem necessary enough to do something for. Because just us regular black men who have no investment in, or you have no investment in, we can make no demands of you. See, that's the beautiful thing about other races of people. Other races of women of other races, men who they're not can make demands of them. And the men that they're fucking can make demands of them. In the, in the black community, the only people who can ask you something is a man who's making, is doing something for you. Other than that, we can't ask you for nothing. That's why I say we can't ask you for nothing. We don't owe you nothing. So I'm just going to stop the video right there, right? This specific conversation really hit home for me as a black man who's worked with women probably my entire life. When I was 18 years old, my mom convinced me to get my CNA because she wanted me to be a nurse. I worked as a CNA for many, many years right out of high school, right from age 18 to even now in my part-time work. If I have to, I will pick up part-time like CNA jobs. And for those of you who don't know much about that type of work, the majority of like the gender that works here the most are women. My first job, I worked at a hospital in Northern California. It was like a surgical acute rehabilitation transitional um, center where people come from surgery and you go to this place and then you kind of help them um, as they're recovering from their surgery. Most of the people that worked there were women and I was one of the few men. There were white women, Latino women, Asian women, and they were mostly friendly. There weren't a lot of black people, and I was one of the only black people at this hospital, which ended up being a problem as time went on. But I wasn't complaining, and I'm not complaining to this day. Bottom line, the women I worked with at my first job were very friendly. And then I started working at skilled facilities, nursing homes, dementia units, and I would run into more women of color at these different facilities that I worked at, which was great, but there was one thing I noticed. And I was still in my early 20s when I picked this up, right? I'm 27 right now, but one thing I noticed is when I would go to these new facilities that I started to work at and I'll get introduced to the staff, the white women would welcome me and were friendly, right? The Filipinos would welcome me and they were friendly. The Latina women would welcome me and they were friendly, right? all positive energy from those groups of women. And I'm talking in general, right? In general, those ethnicities, those groups of women, they were welcoming to me when I was introduced to the new staff that I'll be working with. But when I would get introduced to black women, I noticed that in general, the majority of them paid me no mind, right? I wasn't looking for them to, you know, come at me smiling with open arms and give me a hug or anything. But I mean, it was obvious that they weren't welcoming, they weren't friendly, and they really kind of tried to avoid me, like even eye contact. And I thought it was really strange. It has happened when I was younger and I just learned to accept it the older I got. And I always wondered, why is it that when I see a black woman, right, a woman of color who is working with me in this type of work, they usually try to avoid me. They're not very friendly, but the other races of women are very friendly, very open, and very polite. I learned to deal with it, but it was always a problem and something I always expected when I would be introduced to a new potential coworker in a place I was working at for the first time. 
But being who I am, I didn't take it that seriously. Later on, I would introduce myself just out of being friendly or being polite and build a professional relationship with these women. But I can't sit here and lie and say that it didn't make me feel unwelcome or underappreciated. And like, I always wondered why. You know what I mean? Because I really didn't know. I always wondered why. And as a black man, the truth is sometimes you just look at a black woman and think, okay, this is going to be difficult. We're used to this. And we sort of just accept that black women are going to be either hard to get along with, deal with, and it just just that way right but it wasn't until that live with kevin samuels and he was interacting with that woman who had a problem with smiling to a black man that i realized like hey this is a serious problem i've dealt with it and it could make so much of a difference if black women learned to smile but what really made me make this video is when kevin said you know black women ask for protection from black men protect us right black women often state that they're the least protected race and what stood out to me that i've never thought of before is kevin saying how can a man protect somebody he feels so detached from not connected from you don't show him any warmth right you don't show him a smile and it's a problem when he asks you for a smile and i thought to myself these are the types of conversations that need to be had so that black men and black women when they meet don't have some built-up tension connection from past traumas experiences whatever it is you've gone through in your life it's not my fault i feel like when i meet a black woman a lot of the times they're comparing me to black men that they have dated that's how i really feel it's not my fault i'm not the guy that hurt you why do you want to give me that energy why do you want to treat me that way i never internalized it and i didn't think it was in me until i watched that clip and i understood and started to connect it now and see wait they were connecting me to a picture of black men who they've seen in their past experiences, whether it's your father who neglected you, whether it was your ex who hurt you, right? Whatever you're dealing with, the black men who have hurt you is what you see when you see a fellow black man. I am not that man. I did not hurt you. And I think these type of conversations need to be had so that when black men and black women meet, that tension is minimized and there could be room for giving each other a bit um, of leeway and understanding like, hey, this is someone else. This is a different human being. I don't have to connect them to my traumas and past. And like I said, in most cases, I didn't let that initial introduction deter me from building friendly, professional relationships with the black women that I worked with, right? And at work, I'm pretty chill and kind of, you know, outgoing. I'm I'm a friendly guy, even though you may not think so by just watching these videos, but I really am. You know what I mean? I didn't let that stop me. But I wanted to make this video because I feel like this is a conversation a lot of black men can relate to and a lot of black women maybe haven't heard a perspective of. Listen, have you experienced this before in your professional life or in your everyday day-to-day -day life? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as a black woman, where do you think that... Um, came from, right? The women that I was interacting with. I'm open to answers. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. More than that, it really helped me if you guys hit that like button more than the subscribe button. I want you to hit that like button. Why? Because that helps push the content to other new people who this could also reach. My name is Chisha Zed. To my subscribers, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Peace.